there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk Bounty video and welcome to episode 154 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and answer them to the best of my ability. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured, leave it in the comment section below. And I just want to apologise to everybody that did leave a question last week that isn't featured this week. I just had loads of questions last week, loads and loads to choose from, and I couldn't fit them all in. But please keep trying, keep persevering, leave the questions in the comment section, and I'm sure you'll be featured next week. All right then, with all that being said, if you do happen to enjoy the video, hit the like button down below, and let's get straight on to the first question. Going Bork says, hey boss, question for next week. So on some VC45 mold figures, I've noticed the plastic turns pinkish. If you have this problem as well, what is this? And is there a way to get rid of it? Thanks. So VC45, this is the one that we're talking about here. Now I've got to admit, I've never experienced that problem myself with figures from the vintage collection using that mold. So VC45 onwards. However, the clone pilot from the Black Series 3.75, I think that's fairly common with that figure. I've got a couple of them and it's definitely happened with me. It's gone pinkish. I'm not 100% sure what it is. It's probably got something to do with plastic reacting with other elements and what have you. I'm not too sure why it's only with the clone pilot for me, but if you've got it on other figures, then obviously it's more of a widespread problem. But I've got to say, as I say, I've never really noticed it on any of the ones that I've got apart from that pilot. The only thing that you could probably do to sort of sort that out is use some kind of like hydro technique that people use to whiten up their figures. I personally wouldn't recommend that on vintage figures, but you know, try it on your modern figures. Although I do know people that have done it and it's not permanent, you know, it comes back. They do it for yellowing and things like that. And it, the yellowing always seems to come back. Um, not too sure if it's gonna get rid of the pinkness, but you know, you could try it. Ashley Farmer says, question for next week or in general, did you see or ask how the energy shield on Paz Vizsla is attached? Is it a peg or a clip, etc.? Would it be able to be swapped to other figures? I didn't actually ask that question when I was there at the MCM Comic Con, but judging by this image here that I'll throw up on the screen, you can see there is a peg hole on his gauntlet there. That's definitely for the shield. So I think the shield's just gonna have like a, a small peg on it basically. And therefore, unless there's another figure with the same size peg hole, then you're not gonna be able to use it for those figures. Only Juan Hope says, great video. Is there anything that Lego does with their Star Wars sets that you would like to maybe see the vintage collection do or adapt. It seems like Lego does better at hitting multiple characters, scenes, etc. I collect both Lego and TVC, thanks Bosk. Well, I never really like to compare Lego with action figures in general because Lego has a completely different business model in that, you know, when they bring out a new set, 95% of the pieces are already in production, they're already made, there's no new molding or anything to do. Often people do complain about the minifigures using old molds and things like that and not being updated. So people have the same issues with Lego that we do with figures in terms of like new tooling and things like that. But because Lego has such a vast array of pieces that are already there for them to use, you know, the costs on producing something new are nowhere near as much as, you know, Hasbro needs to spend on a whole newly tooled figure, for example. So I never like to compare the two but I guess you know Lego obviously brings out lots of vehicles which is something that we're missing from the vintage collection so that's definitely something that I would like to see Hasbro do you know give us more vehicles. Gorbakzo says hey BB thanks for your reliable quality content thank you so much. My question do you know if there are going to be Ned B and B2 Emo releases in the vintage collection line? It's not something that I know of, I would hope because the Ned B is a figure in the Black Series that hopefully it will be transferred to the Vintage Collection at some point. B2 Emo, I'm not too sure if they'll bother with that one because obviously, you know, we've seen that in the, uh, what is it, the Droid Factory line through Disney Parks. So, you know, maybe maybe sometime in the future, but I don't think they're going to bother with that one personally, but you never know. Just Capster says, awesome video boss. Do you think we can get a small playset of Jabba's Dungeon like from the old Kenner days? They can include a carded EV99. Would you think it would sell well? Maybe they can have a deluxe figure addition to add 8D8 with his torture devices. Would love to see multiple droid deluxe boxes to add to the set as they would go well with the throne room playset. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It would go well with the throne room playset that they're going to be bringing out. The only issue that I have with a small playset including a figure like EV99 or 8D8 is that to do those figures I think they've got to be newly tooled figures and I've got a feeling that if you're going to put those in a playset the, the cost of that playset would be 
a lot of money. If you look at all the other play sets they've, that they've done, they seem to have figures that are already kind of out there. You know, they can reuse them and therefore the, the cost of the playset isn't astronomical. If they were going to do an EV99 or an 8D8, I could see the playset being far too much for them to have to recoup the cost of producing it, unfortunately. But it's a great idea, man. At one with the four says, great video as always. Question for next week. With all the Black Series gets more figures than TVC commentary, an often given reason is that they make more money out of the Black Series. However, giving them the benefit of the doubt, do you think that Hasbro making a Black Series character first helps them when making a TVC equivalent? Essentially, lessons learned. Also, on the SWTVC live stream the other day, they said that Hasbro had a much bigger tooling library to choose from than the Black Series, which helps them. Do you know whether this is correct and how much bigger this might be? Trying to give Hasbro the benefit of the doubt. So to answer the first part of your question, sometimes it does you know, benefit us to, to wait for them to have already done it in the Black Series and what have you. If you look at IG-11, for example, we had to wait a long time to get our version of IG-11, but he's a newly tooled IG-11, he's screen accurate, Whereas the one in the Black Series, they just put out IG-88 and, you know, repainted him, basically. So on that occasion, they didn't get a screen accurate version and we did. But also, I think these days they do share the digital sculpting. So if you look at Ahsoka, for example, from The Mandalorian, the Corvus version, there is very little difference between the Black Series version and the uh, Vintage Collection version. If you put them side by side, the Vintage Collection version is just literally a miniature version of the Black Series version. So to summarise, you know, making the Black Series character first sometimes does help the Vintage Collection equivalent version of that figure, absolutely. In terms of the bigger tooling library, I think basically what they're saying on that SWTVC is that the Black Series goes back, what, to 2014? And I think that tooling library, they can sort of take pieces from those figures stretching all the way back to 2014. Whereas I think with 3.75, you know, you can't really go back to the vast amount of figures that we had in 2002 and all the Attack of the Clones figures. It's just impossible to make sort of newly updated versions of those figures. Hasbro do try and go back as far as they possibly can. If you look at the uh, Leia Poncho, for example, in Endor, I think that figure was 2006 and they only updated it ever so slightly. So, you know, but we call them out for that sort of thing. So they can't really go back too far. So if you look at the amount of figures the Black Series has got in its library, they're all usable, basically. Anything that they put out in 2014, they could probably still get away with using the legs or the arms, that sort of thing. I think that's basically what they were saying. Dial3 says, great video boss question for next week. The Mission Fleet series took over from the 5POA movie line and it seems to be clogging up store shelves here in Canada and in the States. What if Hasbro canceled that line and used the budget for TVC? How would you feel about that? Now, of course, I'm all for anything that's going to increase the budget for the Vintage Collection, but I don't think uh, cancelling the Mission Fleet will actually help that. And in all honesty, the Mission Fleet there is for the real sort of younger kids. It's to get them into Star Wars. It's to get them into the hobby. And I personally think that's a good thing. I, I think something still needs to exist for those sort of fans. Ultimately, the Vintage Collection and the Black Series are for adult collectors, and they definitely need to be separated. And really the budget needs to be separated as well. Chris Morey says, hello boss, hope all is well. So my question for next week is, what are your favorite original Kenner figures when you were younger? And also now, mine are Boba Fett, Sensorscope R2, Admiral Akbar, and Yoda. Not necessarily in that order. Thanks and have a good week. So I've just put a few of my favorites from when I was a kid in front of you here. Um, you know, I used to absolutely love the Jedi Luke figure and the Hoth Stormtrooper. They were two of my favorites, Bosk obviously. Um, Bespin Han and in the latter days this was one of my most played with figures the Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper I thought that was absolutely amazing when they brought that out same with the Han in Carbonite and uh, this was always one of my favorite aliens as well I think the sculpting for Squid Head was just brilliant and these ones really sort of remain my favorites as well I could probably throw in Luke Bespin as well he's a great figure Colonel Anger says, great video, Tim. Lots of good info. I hear a lot of grumbling from the Vintage Collection community about balancing the scales with the Black Series. And I've noticed in these grumblings, the main issue seems to be Vintage Collection collectors want more totally newly tooled figures. But that just seems like another way to say that we want more figures from new media. I just can't understand why so much emphasis is put on all new tooling. As long as the figure is accurate as possible, what does it matter if it has reused parts? Just an observation and thanks for all you do for the community. 
So it doesn't really matter that much, I guess. If you look, for example, at the figure in Dan figure, right? The Black Series figure in Dan is a newly tooled figure from top to bottom. It looks fantastic. And the Vintage Collection one has got cargo trousers on, basically. The trousers have got pockets on. Now, if you can live with that, then that's absolutely fine. But this is what we're talking about when we're saying balancing the scales. Also, I don't think newly tooled figures really does stretch just to new media figures. Of course, I would love new media figures and you're right they do often require new tooling but i think when you look at the heroes from the original trilogy luke leia ben kenobi and han we need new versions of those figures more than ever the versions that we've got just don't cut it and to produce those figures we're going to need newly tooled figures basically to get those out so it doesn't always have to be new media but I can see what you're saying. Nicholas Rhea says, question for next week. Do you think Hasbro will ever produce retro collection vehicles or play sets? Thanks, love the channel. Thanks for the question, Nicholas. I've got to say, um, it's not an impossibility, but I, I just can't see the point in doing it personally. Like if Hasbro, for example, were going to make a vintage Millennium Falcon, you know, how much would they charge for that? I think it would be a lot. And you can probably get yourself a vintage Millennium Falcon out of the box in really great condition for... 100 150 something like that you know if you look at this torn torn for example how much would hasbro charge for something like that nowadays and the speeder bike as well i think there'd be a lot of money and you can get these things you know on the secondary market still for, for reasonable prices i think obviously when they start to get expensive is when you include the mint in packaging you know unopened really nice packaging that then they command a premium and i think the only reason to do it is to get that packaging back back out there and i just i just can't really see the point to be honest okay then so we now have a few questions about has labs and ga says hi bb great stuff as always my question for next week tvc has labs have a 100 record for being backed so obviously the next star wars has lab needs to be for the vintage collection with this in mind would you prefer first a 500 pound sand crawler or a 300 pound dream figure set containing the Katonica sisters, Velkan Tazeri, Tayam Dren, Garan, Amanaman, -Aman, and Sima Lu. Cheers, man. So first of all, I don't really want to put prices on these things because I don't really want to be giving them any ideas, you know. Um, let's wait for Hasbro to sort of come up with the pricing and then we can vote with our wallets essentially. But, you know, I'm going to sit on the fence with this one because I would absolutely love a sand crawler. I think everybody knows that by now. A sand crawler would be very, very high on my list of you know, dream items, a really nicely scaled one that we've never had before. The others that we've had just aren't big enough, in my opinion. But in terms of a dream figure pack, I think the figures that you've mentioned there, I'd want some of those in the main line, to be honest. I mean, Velkin Tazeri, for example, is one, you know, just finish the skiff, Hasbro. Like, you've given us all the other characters for that one skiff, the prisoner skiff. You need Velkin Tazeri is the last one. So I would hope that they would put him out in another way. I wouldn't want to sort of rely on a Haslab for him. I think the best way for a figure dream Haslab is to concentrate on the four or five heroes from the original trilogy. You know, Ben, Luke, Han, Leia, maybe a vac metalized C-3PO or something. You know, let's test out this sort of format with, with those figures there. You could make them really, really good with loads of accessories, Stormtrooper belts, all that kind of stuff. And then maybe just release the standard figures in the sort of main line as well to help pay for it. Major Camo says, excellent work as always, Tim. Question for next week. Would you prefer the next HasLab to be a playset or a vehicle? To me, the HasLabs have always been about the larger than life vehicles that could also double as a playset. What are your thoughts? I think if you're going to sort of tie me down to what do I want, a vehicle or a playset, then it would have to be a vehicle. I think there's loads of vehicles that they could possibly do as a HasLab. Play sets for me, I think there's only really one, maybe two, that I think could warrant a HasLab, and that's the Cantina, if they did it right, full Cantina, and also the Death Star. But the Death Star is so vast with loads of different scenes that they could do, you know, it worries me on how they would actually sort of get around to doing that. Would it be modular and all that kind of thing? It's too many questions around the Death Star for me. And Stuart Roulette says, hey BB, question for next week. Since they are doing a 20 years of the Clone Wars, do you think Hasbro could do a HasLab of a new gunship and maybe a command center accessory or ATTE dropship with an ATTE? I'd absolutely love the dropship with the ATTE. That, that would be awesome if they did that really well. The Lego set of that is amazing. In terms of the gunship, I think the gunship that we have got at the moment is perfectly fine. They need to reissue that in the vintage collection. 
My good friend Nick did a video about the secondary market prices of that gunship. And I think, you know, the consensus is that we don't really need that sort of ship being done in HasLab. It's perfectly fine the way it is. Just bring it out again, basically. So uh, if they were to do it in HasLab, then obviously it needs to be bigger than the one that we've got, slightly more scaled. But I honestly don't think it's necessary. Luke Van Ralte. I Sorry, I've probably butchered your name there, my friend. He says, hello, new member here. Great channel. Question for next week. Do you think Hasbro will ever complete the crew of both desert skiffs? As I mentioned before in one of the other questions, I think the one that they can do is the prisoner skiff. There's one character remaining, Velkan Tazeri. Uh, my good friend John Miko from the Facebook group, Vintage Collection Facebook group, he put out a campaign for them to do that. So... That seems like the obvious choice to me. The other skiff, I think there's probably too many characters still to do on that one. I don't think they'll ever complete that one personally, but the one they can complete is very easy for them to complete because it's one character away. Come on, Hasbro, you know what to do. Spy Guy says, great video, Bosk, as always. Question for next week. With the reveal of the Andor in disguise figure, do you think there could be a possibility for an Imperial Army four pack or an Imperial Army carded figure? By Imperial Army trooper, I mean the ones on Aldani or the ones in the black on Ferrix. So this is something that I would absolutely love for them to do. As soon as I saw that Andor in disguise figure, I immediately thought about, I think the others are called Nemec, Skeen and Bacona. I think Bacona is a, a fairly big guy, so there might be some issues getting him accurate. But in terms of the other two, Nemec and Skeen, I think you can use the body of Andor quite easily and great four pack that would be you know at the end of the day they've got pretty much the same armor so different heads and what have you different weapons that would be that would be sweet scolio reset <laughs> says greetings bb discovered your channel as i was curious about the tvc vader really happy with the purchase with the jedi survivor video game announced and a new cal kestis and bd1 already in production for later in 2023 do you think there's a chance that hasbro will re-release the second sister for the archive line and offer a TVC alternative as they did for the third sister Reva, and should they? So in terms of the archive line for the Black Series, I think the second sister commands quite a lot of money on the secondary market, so why not You know, give people another chance to get that one? In terms of the second sister for the Vintage Collection, don't get me wrong, I'd absolutely love them to do it, but the version that we're getting of Cal Kestis is from Jedi Survivor and not Jedi Fallen Order. And spoiler alert, I think the second sister dies in Jedi Fallen Order. So, um, you know, and I don't really think maybe I, I was looking at Reva and whether they could use some of her parts. And I think the, the, the armor and the body is just too different to the second sister that they wouldn't be able to do that personally. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be getting a second sister in the vintage collection because I think that game has sort of passed us by. But, you know, it would be awesome if they did, man. Morgan Pogue says, hey Bosk, love the videos. Keep up all the good work. Question for next week. Do you think we'll eventually get helmets for the Bad Batch? And if so, which one first? Yeah, I've, I'm thinking about this one. I'm not too sure if the Bad Batch is a uh, sort of universally loved thing that, that they would bother doing the helmets in the Black Series. I think if they could get away with repainting one, maybe the Phase 2 clone helmet, is that even like Hunters, for example. I, I don't think it is. I think Hunters is probably different. So with that, I, I doubt it personally. Danny Allen says, thank you as always for the great content, mate. Keep it coming. Question for next week. Now, whilst I do not think they will, what do you think of finishing the 96 via HasLab? What do they have left? 12 figs? Maybe the only way we get the deep dive characters and add Ula and Tonica sisters. Fun thought to entertain, but it won't happen. Um, well, yeah, I, yeah as you, I think you're right. It probably won't happen. But in terms of the finish the 96, I did a whole sort of video series on this and I had to go quickly back to that to see how many we had left. And by my count, we've still got 33 to do. You mentioned 12 there. I don't think it's that. I think there's more of them to do, man. 33. And, and I don't think I even included things like Red Snaggletooth because we've had, you know, a version of that in the vintage collection. <laughs> So 33 is still a long way for them to go. And, you know, via HasLab, as we talked about figure packs earlier, I think they can go a long way to finishing that with the four main heroes or five main heroes, if you're counting C-3PO with Vac Metal. Justin Riley says, thanks once again for your weekly Q&A post question for next week. So Hasbro has finally brought out Paz Visitor to the Vintage Collection. And boy, oh boy, this is a very welcome. And my gosh, the pre-release photos are suggested that this will be a great figure. 
but it costs twice the amount of a regular TVC figure to purchase it. My question is, do you think it's worth the $30.99 that Star Action Figures is charging with post on top? Bonus question, do you think Hasbro are going price hike nuts, even considering the material and travel costs at the moment, or do you think they've gone a bit crazy? with the implication that they are fleecing the collectors with this figure in particular. Full disclosure, I really want this figure and I have one on pre-order, but I did so with gritted teeth. So in short, yes, I think they're going a bit price hike crazy, but to be honest, the Paz Vizsla isn't the one that worried me. I can kind of understand why that figure's expensive or at least deluxe anyway, because it's a, a newly tooled figure. It's got loads and loads of paint apps. I would imagine that figure costs quite a lot to produce, but it is overpriced. But also what you have to consider as well living in the UK is that the currency conversion doesn't seem to be correct either. I think that figure in the States was $27.99, but over here it's £30. It's crazy. Like where is the currency conversion? It should be a little bit less, not more. I know the States have sales tax and things like that and we have VAT included, but it seems far too much. However, I wasn't really too worried about the Paz Vizsla, more I was worried about the recent Boba Fett, the Kenner Colors Boba Fett. That one over here was £22.99, $20.99, and that is a repainted figure with less paint apps than the Return of the Jedi version that it's based on. So I really, really do not understand where the pricing for that one has come from. That, sure enough, is has got to be Boba Fett tax. Because if you look at the cult figure, the Ark Trooper cult that was revealed on the same day, that's $16.99. And that's a, an exclusive, just like the Boba Fett is an exclusive. So that one for me is just, you know, rinsing people because it's Boba Fett. And, you know, as I said, I think on last week's video, Hasbro need to watch themselves at the prices because People are going to be buying less and less of these things. They're going to be leaving the hobby completely. And at the end of that, as I said last week, you know, keep the prices low. People will buy more and you'll have more people in the hobby and therefore you'll make more money. If you have prices too high, you'll sell less and more people leave the hobby and therefore you will make less money. So if they're trying to make more money, they're going about it the wrong way, in my opinion. So yes, the price hikes are very, very concerning. But at the end of the day, guys, vote with your wallets. If you don't want it, if you don't want to pay that price, don't pay it. All right then, guys, that's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, drop a like down below. Just want to say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members for the extra support. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. And of course, thank you all for watching, the people that watch my videos. Thank you so much. And we shall see you on the next one.